There were certain people from Judea came to Antioch Church, and they tried to teach people that uh, they need to have what, circumcision. In order for them to be saved, they need to be circumcised. In order to be saved, they need to follow the Moses law. In, in order to be saved, that was their doctrine. The certain people from Judea, they were called Judaizers. They, went, uh, they were Jewish, uh, they were Christians. They believed in Jesus Christ, uh, but at the same time, they also believed the law of Moses. Uh, they believe in Christ, His death and resurrection, but they still think they need to be circumcised and follow the laws of Moses. Basically, they believe that we need to earn salvation. We need to do something more to be saved. That was their doctrine of salvation. You know, throughout the history uh, of the history of the church, uh, there have been many people like Judaizers, those who would uh, burden believers with strict laws and traditions. They come up with this idea of earning salvation, salvation through work. You need to do something more to complete the salvation process. By keeping certain laws, by doing something more to achieve the salvation. And this idea is very dangerous, unbiblical. This is not good at all because salvation through work always glorifies people instead of Jesus. People will get credit for earning salvation by doing something. And they judge people who are not doing the right job. They're categorizing people. And I attend church. I read the Bible every day. I have this wonderful service for the kingdom of God. But you don't. You're A, you're B, you're C, you're D, you're failure. So they categorize people. They glorify themselves, their work, but they're judging other people. And that's no love. So clearly, this is not a gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not a good news, but bad. The idea of salvation through work had to be silenced. Today's passage, we hear a letter was sent to Antioch Church from Jerusalem Council. And we talked about Jerusalem Council last week. Uh, they are the highest governing body in the early church. They make the serious executive decision. And people honor the system and respect the ruling system in that church. Uh, there was an order in the church. Uh, there is a respect for leaders, a respect for elders, respect for uh, pastors. And their decisions, they follow through what they made the decision, the decision they had made. The councils, they spent a long time debating, discussing, praying together. By the work of the Holy Spirit, they finally made the, this decision. The conclusion was, salvation is by grace alone. Salvation is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not by works. That was the conclusion they had. And Paul and Barnabas, that's what been telling everybody. So they were right. Judaizers, the certain people from Zudia, they were wrong. These guys, in this letter we find that they were self-appointed teachers. Self-appointed teacher. They were not certified. They were not approved. You know, they don't have a license to teach. They don't have a right to teach, but they did. You know how dangerous this is? And sometimes we encounter self-appointed teachers. We need to be really careful. I know some of you guys are teaching right now, but you need to be really careful as well. You gotta follow the certain doctrines that that church, you know, giving you the guideline with. The structures. Meditation is important. Your, your self-reflection is so important. But we need to be really careful. Without having that, that, that help, guidelines, we can go the sidetrack. Um, you know, 
if you are listening to sermon or uh, reading articles from the internet, there's so many resources, so many things going on, and it's like we're flooded with those information. There's so many things. And I'm pretty sure there's so many great articles, you know, teaching us about Bible and teaching us how to live as a Christians. But at the same time, we need to be really careful. We need to know where they are coming from. We really need to know what's their motive, what's their intention, what was their core of their message. Where are they coming from? We have to carefully examine the sources. There are so many self-appointed, unapproved, untrained, uneducated teachers. And they might teach something not very biblical, not very gospel-like messages. Then you'll be in trouble. You know, one of my students in Delaware, he was, he just met Christ and he was really, you know, pumped up for Christ. And he'd been searching, it was like, he was hungry and thirsty for the Word of God. And what he did, he was Googled it and tried to get articles. And he found this one specific uh, website. And he was like so inspired. And he was like giving me that link, you know, Pastor Andrew, you gotta check this out. And I opened it up. You know, I found out this is morning. Jehovah Witness. You see what I'm saying? People might end up in this heretical messages, not knowing why, where is like what they are really saying. They say very, you know, very similar message like us. But if you get the core with it, it's not the gospel. It's not what Bible actually telling them, telling us. So they are interpreting the wrong way, and and we get damages. They they shake the foundation of the gospel. So that's the problem. So we need to be really careful. The letter from the Jerusalem Council, they are declaring the self-appointed teacher, the Judaizer, to be false. They are declaring that the anti-Christians should not listen to these teachers anymore. They are making, they are drawing the line. It's harsh, it's cruel, but they needed to do it. Sometimes we have to cut off. This is not right. We have to cut it off. It's harsh, cruel, but it, we need to do it. It's necessary for us to do it sometimes. The other, verse 29, 3, 2, 1. You are to abstain from food, sacrifice to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. All right. In this letter, they're, you know, they're saying, you know, you're free and you're, you're good. You, know, you don't have to follow this just Judaism, this, this, uh, the uh, legalism that, that they have. You don't have to do it. You're completely free. But at the same time, they're, they're saying, you know, there's, there's some requirements for you guys to follow. There's some sort of a lodge. Avoid everything. Associate with your former life of idolatry. Do not associate with any longer with pagan worship and keep yourself sexually pure. And we're thinking, reading this, is this some kind of law? Is this some kind of another law they're bringing in? And it sounds like very contradiction, you know? You said one thing and you're saying the other, another, another thing here. You said that we are free from law, but now you are giving another law. It's, it doesn't make sense. But first of all, it's not the law that will uh, determine or dictating the consequences of our salvation. This is required, <coughs> but this is not the law that relates with our salvation. By the way, that why they had this requirement in the first place. And we have to go back to verse 21. 19 and 21. Let me just read it. It is my judgment. This is conclusion. Uh, the apostle, uh, the James, the brother of brother of uh, Jesus, he was the head of the head pastor of the Jerusalem church. At the very end of this question, he makes this decision, the final conclusion, and he's saying, "It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentile who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood." And verse 21, 
For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest time and is read, uh, is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. And this is why they are giving them the Gentiles requirements, this, this laws. You know, there are people who are preaching the law of Moses in every city, in the synagogue. And for those people, the Jerusalem Council making this decision, isn't it, isn't it interesting? They're considerate to, them, to those people. You know, they don't want the Gentile Christian to provoke the Jews. Those people into Judaism. There is no need to make a trouble, conflict against those people in this matter. You know, sometimes we don't we don't have to make a trouble. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, I remember when you know that those people they're so spiritual and religious, and they're like I don't know. They they have that. So much pride in, 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 in Christianity and they go out and telling everybody that Jesus is number one. This is great, wonderful. However, they're just going beyond what they should, should have done. I remember this, this uh, lady in, in, in uh, a Korean uh, subway station She's yelling at this monk, you gotta believe in Jesus Christ. You gotta, you gotta go to church. You know, you are doing the wrong thing. You are sinful. You go to hell. And listen to me. And I've seen this, this guy in the middle of the street. He was laying his hand. He was wearing this cross at the big crucifixion. And he said, you know, uh, heaven, like we, heaven through Jesus Christ. And you, you go hell without Christ. Something like big, you know, that's like red and black and it's like very outstanding bold you know the, the character and he was like laying his hands on this monk on, on, on the head of his uh, on the monk and he was like praying and you don't do that kind of stuff you don't have to make conflicts I mean we need to have a Jesus Christ. We need to preach the word of Jesus Christ. Whoever we meet, we have to present Christ. But we don't have to provoke those people. We don't have to provoke the people, uh, the, uh, the Muslim brothers. We don't have to provoke them. We don't have to provoke the Buddhist people. We don't have to make a conflict. Sometimes, Holy Spirit convicts, convicts us and convincing us to, to, to do the, to the ministry for them, but not always. We need to have a wisdom. We need, we need to be wise, smart. So this is what they are saying. You know, they didn't say, you know, you go and, and tell them and break the, the synagogue and collapse them and, and, and demolish them and, and preach the gospel. They didn't say that. The reason they asked them to abstain all those things because of those people in the synagogue, the Jewish who are in Judaism. <coughs> you know, they are giving this guideline. And as a church leaders, we have to make those kind of laws and requirements. And this is beneficial for us. And it is not going against gospel at all. And help us to understand what it means to ch be changed, be renewed after accepting the message of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. I have another uh, translation, Berean Study Bible. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is edifying. Do you hear that? You know, because of Christ, we are under the grace, we're absolutely free from law. Which means, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. We won't be condemned. 
We just literally look at anything. We can do anything. But there are certain things that Christians expect, you know, Christians, they do not encourage Christians to do certain things. What are we? You can make a list. First of all, drink. We don't, especially Korean church, we don't encourage people to have a, like, you know, this drink. Getting drunk, it's a problem. How about smoke? Smoking, sometimes it becomes a, a problem. Gambling, <coughs> watching pornography, premarital sex, we don't encourage them. We don't encourage people to do it. I'm not gonna say, hey, you're free, go ahead and do it. It's okay, we're not gonna do that. No, this is, we have guidelines, like, don't do it, you don't do that. Please don't do it. You're not doing it. Why? Because this is something that we need to do as, as a Christian, and we have that certain expectation. If you have done it, I'm not going to say, hey, you have done it, how could you? You go to hell. I'm not going to say that to you. Nobody will do that. Jesus and God, He won't say that to you. You got drunk? How could you? You smoke? You, 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 had, you, you, were, you had a drug? <coughs> you watch the pornography? You go to hell. Jesus won't condemn you. So be free from it. However, it's not encouraged to do so. We can do anything and everything. We're absolutely free from laws. However, it doesn't mean that we do everything we want to do. There is a big difference. And as a mature Christians, we want to encourage and edify people through our life, through our ministry. That's why it says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. <coughs> everything is permissible. We can do anything, but not everything is edifying. What if I got drunk? A lot of people in the wedding celebration, you know, last time I went to the reception, you know, they were like getting drunk. You know, I'm going to make this guy get drunk. And I was like, it's like culture shock for me. You know, what if I, I was there and drinking, I got drunk. Now people make a lot of mess because of this. We have seen breaking relationship, breaking the mood, a lot of conflicts. You know what? If I just get a drunk, what if, what if I smoke? Cigar, if you go to Cuba, they're selling a really great quality cigar with a very cheap, there's like cigar, cigar factory right beside of that big church. You know how much the cigar it was? It's like $50 for one single cigar. What if I picked it up and smoking it in front of you guys? Imagine. What if I go to a casino in Niagara Falls or Bradford? doing this all night long, and like, what if I do that? What if I had an affair with somebody? Do they make, all those things make me go to hell? No. But I'm not doing that, why? Because it's not edifying. It does not make me go to hell, but it is not edifying anything. It doesn't interfere with my salvation because my salvation is based on the blood of Jesus Christ, not by my work. However, I choose not to do it. Those mature Christians, they choose not to do it because you care about the community, you care about the people in the community as well. Because I do this, I will let people down. If you're a mature Christian, you consider that, you think about that. It will make people very discouraging. If I have done all those things, you know how, who, who will be very disappointed? You guys. 
it's funny that I had this uh, very, uh, I had this root beer. I love root beer. You guys know what root beer? Daddy root beer? The, the bottle? Like, it looks like a beer bottle, right? I love root beer, and I, 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 I took a picture. Uh, somebody took a picture of me drinking it and posted it up with the Facebook. You know, I replied. You know, I replied. How could you do that? It was like, of course, they're youth group students. They're sensitive. They're looking up to me, and they have respect for me. They have an expectation. As leaders of the community, we live with that kind of expectation. And sometimes it's hard, I know that. But we intentionally, we choose things. Hey, this is what I have to do. This one, I have to cut it off. It's nothing to do with the salvation. You don't go to hell because of the thing that you choose to do. But you will let other people discouraged, not edifying them, but making them confused. So that's the reason that you don't choose to do it. And here, here uh, I encourage, personally, I encourage you guys, don't get into addiction. Don't, don't watch those things. Don't get drunk. Don't get into drunk. And we make that kind of a, a guideline. So we have to really keep on considering ourselves, like keep on asking this question, am I really encouraging and edifying to other people, my life, my ministry, my choices, or are we keep on making discouragement and confusing for other people in, in the community? I'm going to ask those questions. But again, it's not the law. Uh, determine your salvation. The core message of the letter from uh, Jerusalem Council, we are Saved by grace. Grace, not by love. Salvation is by grace through faith, not by works. This is the good news. And we <coughs> preserve this and declare it to others. 